scourging or flogging of the victim's back. The Romans used a whip called a flagellum, which consisted of small pieces of bone and metal attached to a number of leather strands. The number of blows given to Jesus is not recorded. However, the number of blows in Jewish law was 39. During the scourging, the skin was ripped from the back, exposing a bloody mass of tissue and bone. Extreme blood loss occurred, often causing death or at least unconsciousness. In addition to the flogging, Jesus faced severe beating and torment by the Roman soldiers, including the plucking of his beard and the piercing of his scalp with the crown of thorns. After the flogging, the victim was often forced to carry his own cross, or pat blow, as it was uh, referred to, to the execution site. The cross could easily weigh in excess of 300 pounds. In the case of Jesus, the record shows that he may have carried his cross the distance of over two football fields in a weak and tormented state. Once the victim arrived at the execution site, the cross was put on the ground and the victim was forced to lie upon it. Spikes about seven inches long and three eighths inch of diameter was driven into the ribs. The spikes would hit the area of the median nerve causing shocks of pain up the arms to the shoulders and neck. In the center of the stock was a crude seat to support the victim. The cross was then lifted to the, and the victim's body was awkwardly turned on the seat so that the feet could be nailed to the, to the cross. At this point, there was a tremendous strain put on the wrist, arms, and shoulders, resulting in a dislocation of the shoulder and elbow joints. The position of the nailed body held the victim's rib cage in a fixed position, which made it extremely difficult to exhale and impossible to take a full breath. Having suffered from the scourging, the beatings, and the walk with the cross, Jesus was described as extremely weak and dehydrated. He was probably losing significant amounts of blood. As time passed, the loss of blood and lack of oxygen would cause severe cramps, spasmodic contractions, and probably unconsciousness. Ultimately, the, vic the mechanism of death and crucifixion was suffocation. To breathe, the victim was forced to push up on his feet to allow for the inflation of the lungs. As the body weakened and pain in the feet and legs became unbearable, the victim was forced to trade breathing for pain and exhaustion. And eventually the victim would succumb in this way, becoming utterly exhausted or lapsing into unconsciousness so he could no longer lift his body and inflate his lungs. Now, it says that due to the loss of blood from the scourging, the victim probably formed a respiratory acidosis, resulting in an increased strain on the heart which beats faster to compensate. Fluid would also build up in the lungs under the stress of hypoxia and acidosis the heart would eventually fail. There are several different theories on the actual cause of death for Jesus, but we do know that Jesus gave his life willingly. He never once tried to run away. He never once tried to withdrawal from the pain and suffering that he was experiencing. But yet there was a human side to Jesus. The glorification side knew what he had to do, Brother Melvin. Yeah. It was at the same time of the offering of the Lamb of Sacrifice. Jesus became the great sacrifice, the Lamb of God. And they made a mockery. And when they raised that cross up and let it fall into that hole, can you imagine, church, the pain that was right to that man's body? Oh, can you imagine? Oh, what was taking place? Can you imagine him hanging there? Oh, God. Oh, God, can you imagine what he looked like and what he was taking on for us? Us old filthy, dirty sinners that wouldn't even deserve. Jesus Christ to die for us. 